I welcome you all again for this NP10 online lecture on earthquake geotechnical engineering. Today we are at lecture number 55 which is on ground improvement techniques and in this module which is the last module, sixth module of this course, we already discussed types of ground improvement techniques that is the chapter 1 is over of this module. Today we are going to start the second chapter of this module, uh, ground improvement using syntho, uh, geosynthetics that will continue for another uh, lect uh, lecture 55 and 56. So, we have two lectures from this chapter and then once it is over then we are going to talk about uh, ground improvement using natural fibers and then verification of soil improvement. So, coming to this uh, geosynthetics what we are going to cover in this chapter 2 uh, particular today's lecture, we are going to talk about the geosynthetics, introduction of the geosynthetics means basically what the geosynthetics are. Then what are the traditional methods of soil improvement? We, some of we have already discussed in lecture number 52, 53, 54. So, we will be reviewing them from different perspective. What are the objective of geosynthetics? That will be also discussed. Then we do have fiber reinforcement or geosynthetics, geosynthetics filters. Then finally, we are going to talk about types or forms of geosynthetics, which include geotextile, geogrids, geonets, geomembranes, and geo composites. So, let us start with the introduction. What is the geosynthetics? Uh, geosynthetics for are the for uh, use for various engineering purpose, particularly for supporting a foundation of a structure. Soil is required to improve its strength. So, basically uh, we already see, uh, ob observed that why you require the soil improvement because so that your soil can support some type of particular type of foundation of a structure or maybe whatever load is coming from the structure, the soil is able to carry that load. So, basically it increases the load bearing capacity of the soil as well as the, it reduces the settlement. Thus, improvement in soil properties by stabilization pro pro processes or reinforcing it with various reinforcing material is much needed and it may require that in many situations no, may not be the all. And as a result, soil reinforcement is one of the engineering areas in the field of geotechnical and geoenvironmental engineering. And extensive research is being done in this field. Here coming to this, uh, when we talk about soil reinforcement, I think if you recall, when we talk about uh, different techniques of ground improvement, one of the techniques was densification. Here what we are going to do, we are going to reinforce the soil which using some foreign material, so which we are going to discuss and it is here. The various forms of first of all reinforcement include ideally extensible and ideally inextensible reinforcement. So, let us say type of reinforcement we can divide in two categories. One are which is can be extended that means have some ductility uh, like uh, uh, very high ductility and some have very like you know rigid inextensible. So, for example, metallic strips, bars, roads which are placed underneath in the ground as large Young's modulus and they cannot extend in both the principal direction because sorry Young's model their Young's modulus is quite large. So, that they, they work like a uh, like you know, rigid. But whereas if we consider geosynthetics or indirectly we say fiber reinforcement, geosynthetics or fiber reinforcements are similar like you can say uh, 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 the, uh, the reinforcement using some fibers that is also geosynthetics. There is every chance of the reinforcement extending both the principal directions. Only the thing that when we talk about fiber reinforcement, uh, geosynthetics are uh, man-made materials, not natural materials, though fiber reinforcement may also include some natural materials. So, here you can say fiber reinforcement using man-made material is basically geosynthetics. And these geosynthetics materials, they are extensible. So, they, they are like uh, uh, strips, bars, roads, they are not extensible. But uh, uh, these geosynthetics are extensible. So, geosynthetics are planar products which is manufactured from polymers uh, or polymeric materials that is synthetic materials used with the soil, rock or other geotechnical related materials. So, uh, basically why geosynthetics name is given? It is combination of geo plus synthetics. So, you can say it is a kind of a synthetic material which is used in conjunction with geo material including soil, rock or may, uh, others. There is a large consumption of geosynthetics in the recent past. For example, if we collect the statistical data, 
Uh, there was almost in 1970s, there were about 5 to 6 geocentric materials was available. But now there are varieties all over the world is uh, uh, more than thousands. So, it is in thousands with the different varieties and the worldwide consumption of uh, is it is in billions of a meter cube. So, if we a meter square if we have that uh, area of uh, if we cover the area how much area is covered. So, it is tremendous. So, like uh, use of geosynthetics are in fact even in research there are different journals which are on exclusion of geosynthetics. Uh, one of the journal is uh, geosynthetics and geomembrane is quite popular area. Coming to this uh, uh, continue with the introduction part of geosynthetics. Geosynthetics replace the traditional construction material because in many cases the use of geosynthetic significantly increase the safety factor, improve performance and reduce cost in comparison with conventional design and construction alternatives. The basic reason why one may need to adopt geosynthetic material for improvement of soil is due to many drawbacks of traditional method of improvement. So, basically uh, you can put it like this way there are traditional method of soil improvement also and sometime traditional method may fail in uh, some situations where you cannot uh, use that. In that case geosynthetics may help. So, geosynthetics may be very helpful particularly in the situation where the traditional methods fails and uh, they may be economical in that situation, but in the normal situation where the traditional methods can be used perhaps uh, they are not so e economical. So, whether they are economical or not economical that depends situation to situation it varies. Coming to traditional methods of soil improvement we have already discussed in when we started lecture 52, 53, 54 different methods are there. Mechanical stabilization for example, densification is nothing but mechanical stabilization where you use vibro floats uh, uh, and vi vibro roads are used. Then you have dynamic compaction, blasting. So, all these are parts of densification technique or the, that is mechanical. So, the properties of soil is improved by changing its gra gradation two or more materials are taken and mixed also that is also in mechanical stabilization it is done like uh, mixing and grouting we have discussed. Yeah. Then aggregates provide internal friction and compression of soil. Uh, now, what are the drawbacks of the mechanical stabilization? Uh, main drawbacks is it is not useful to improve the bearing capacity of the soil with moderate capacity. If suppose if you have uh, already the moderate capacity of the soil, then the for example, densification. Densification of soil is good. When your soil is loose, you densify it, then you so your soil get improved. But if your soil is already densified, it have enough densification and we are further densify it, it is not going to help you. So, for increasing further capacity or let us say strength of the soil, you need to inject some foreign materials maybe including geosynthetics or. This is used extensively in pavement design. For example, uh, mechanical stabilization is much use in the pavement design where you use the large sizes of the rollers to uh, stabilize the soil, but for the foundation design this does not work much. Then there is chemical stabilizations also. The in that case the soil improvement is done by addition of some chemicals. The main action of these chemicals is that calcium chloride reduces the loss of water in the soil. Thereby they are, they are very efficient in silty or clay soils, but it reduces the strength of the soil. So you can use like uh, in some scenarios, but not all. Main advantage is that the setting time and curing time can be controlled. However, drawback they are very costly particularly and the, the benefits are uh, uh, applicable as long as the chemicals are present once they evaporated then it will be uh, lost out. So, and they are not economical. Then coming to thermal stabilizations are also there where you have two types of thermal stabilizations. One is let us say heating or freezing. So, th that is based on the temperature change which causes remarkable improvement in the properties of the soil. So, wherever there is change in the uh, temperature then there could be change in the properties of the soils. So, it could be in the form of either heating or another form we call freezing. So, in case of heating improves the strength of the soil by reducing the water contents in the soil. So, by heating you can reduce the water content. It is very expensive hence rarely used in practice. Similarly, as far the freezing is concerned the strength of soil increases by the 
freezing of the water in the soil, it is also very costly. So, these uh, like measures which you where you use freezing or heating, they do not work. So, basically out of these three traditional methods of soil improvement, most popular is mechanical stabilizations only rather than chemical or thermal. And as far mechanical stabilization is concerned, we have already discussed in much detail in uh, lecture number 52, 53, 54. So, uh, like uh, and we see th that, that mechanical stabilizations also have their drawbacks, particularly when you have the, you, you want to improve your soil conditions for the design of foundations, they are okay for pavement design and other things. So, in that case, some many times we require geosynthetics. Now, coming to geosynthetics, what are the basic objectives? In order to overcome difficulties in the conventional form of ground improvement techniques, soil improvement, uh, soil reinforcement is preferred. So, basically, using geosynthetics, which is we just called it a synthetic fiber reinforcement. So, re reinforcement of soil is done. An effective and reliable technique for increasing the strength and stability of soils is called earth or soil reinforcement. So, this is the, it is done and this technique is uh, no doubt it is uh, uh, reliable and it is very much effective. Only the thing the cost, geosynthetics are also not uh, because they are man made materials, so they may cost also. This reinforcement can be varied either in the form of what we call strip seeds or grid CTC and there uh, that depends on shape, uh, if the shape could be different, then texture that is rough or smooth texture could be there. Then relative stiffness, it could be high for some materials and some materials it could be weak. For example, like steel and it could be low for polymeric fab fabrics. So, different varieties are there depending on their shape, their texture and then relative stiffness. So, fiber reinforcement or we say this simply is geosynthetics. The addition of fiber to the soil not only improve the shear, uh, its shear strength, safety factor and performance of the soil, but it will also reduce the cost of construction in comparison with the conventional construction method. So, the cost of construction uh, will be reduced when you use a geosynthetic material, particularly uh, like where the conventional methods cannot be used. The relative stiffness of soil reinforcement form the basis for classification of the reinforcement as ideally extensible or ideally inextensible. We already discussed in ideally extens inextensible uh, kind of you have steel roads or you have this uh, metallic strips and uh, ex uh, ideally extensibles are the geosynthetics. Soil reinforced with ideally inextensible is termed as reinforced earth and with ideally extensible is called fiber reinforced soil or ply soil. So, the, again which the material if you ask is inextensible, then you can put in the category what we call the reinforced earth. So, reinforced earth is a general term where you use elastic strips or uh, you use the roads, but then another category fiber reinforced soil. The fiber reinforced soil is nothing but it is uh, that is where you use geosynthetics. So, in fact, uh, it is so synonymous that Thus, geosynthetics may be defined as a civil engineering material that is synthesized to use to, to improve and modify the property of the behavior of the soil. So, the first of all, this is a material by using you improve or modify the property of the soil for betterment. These geosynthetics has been used from many applications, for example, from ocean bed to road bed, from foundation on soft soil to landslide control from waste disposal site to water reservoir, geosynthetics have found an important place for themselves in engineering and construction projects. So, their utilities has been in increasing day like you know year by year on and the, the they are getting popularity even those and uh, they are manufacturing because uh, now they are manufactured in masses. So, they are getting economical also comparatively in the uh, uh, in the early stages. In the early stages, they was very costly, but now they are not so costly. Coming to one of the use of geosynthetics is called filter. Geosynthetics have found to provide highly effective filters in numerous applications. They have become an integral part of the solution to many civil engineering problems. 
geotextiles being very versatile material can serve in many functions what are the like we will discuss in the next lectures different applications of geosynthetics but before that let us continue with the most widely used uh, known as a filter in fact when the the geosynthetics started their first use was for, for the filter so many times they also called filter fabrics and when sufficiently thick they can also serve as a drainage materials so rather than uh, like filtering out they can use the drainage materials kind of a to use as a pipe piping effect the difference between these two functions that is filter and drainage functions the orientation of the flow in filtration flow is perpendicular to the geotextile you keep the geotextile flow is in the perpendicular while suppose you want to use these materials as a drainage system naturally then it will act like a pipe or layer this side is geotextile this side then flow will be parallel so flow will be parallel to the geotextiles inside the sheet rather than perpendicular so the filter and uh, like uh, the direction of uh, propagation of water will be different for, uh, perpendicular to each other in most of the drainage and filtration applications use of geotextiles can be justified over a conventional graded granular filter so that depends on the situation to situation or uh, sometimes uh, like com compared to conventional approach geotextiles uh, geosynthetics may be expensive there may be cases where conventional approach is expensive and geosynthetics may be may give you the economical solution to be effective the geotextiles must allow the water to flow through the filter in the drain or the life of the project while retaining the soil particles in place and prevent the mitigation through the filter so one of the use which we'll discuss later also like uh, when this is placed then their objective let's say you you have the saturated soil or you have the summer soil then what will happen if there is no filter if you don't have any geotextiles then the with the flow of water the soil particles will move however the presence of the geotextiles will pro protect the soil particles it may let it go the only water but not the soil particles so it, this may help uh, to avoid the erosion also so these all issues we will discuss later the difference between these two functions is uh, like uh, we already discussed coming to this to be effective they allow the water to flow through the uh, compared to metals polymeric materials have large range of deformation modulus and tensile strength their use in india is increasing over the time now let's discuss that what types of or forms of geosynthetics are there are different uh, geosynthetics uh, in general when we say geosynthetics is a generic term that is a general name for all synthetic materials used in conjunction with soil rock or any other civil engineering material as an integral part of a man made project structure or system so first of all geosynthetics is a synthetic material and this can be used with the soil it will not be it will not be any synthetic material without soil or rock it will not called geosynthetic geosynthetics is basically synthetic materials which need to be used with the soil or rock or any other civil engineering material there are different types of geosynthetics used for example they are listed here first one most popular geotextiles geogrids geomembrane geonets and geomets the last subscript is telling their type of uh, material uh, like how they looks so geotextile will look like a textile material so it is like a like kind of a cloth geogrid will resemble with uh, some grids then you have geomembrane where it will looks like you know the uh, you, you have the membrane so and the nets are also there so you can pick up and then mats so accordingly if you have textile you have grid and membrane then you can identify that this is geo so add the geo words and then you will find for example geo textiles will look like uh, uh, like here uh, this is geo textile and it is kind of a cloth woven type geo textiles so these products are almost exclusively polymeric geo synthetic and those based on natural fibers for example jute cotton wool silk or coir etc are generally not included so in geosynthetics only the man made or artificial or synthetic fibers included natural fibers which is for example jute cotton wool silk coir fiber they are not included in geosynthetics geosynthetics are available in the market under different trade names or the designation for their use mainly in geotechnical environmental hydraulic and transportation engineering applications 
Now, one of the type of geosynthetics, the as we discussed, the first type is geotextiles, which is geo plus textiles. These are permeable polymeric textile products and they are in the form of flexible sheets. Currently available geotextiles are classified into these categories, four categories. One is called the, these are broadly classified in four categories. First one is called woven geotextiles and woven ge geotextiles is made from yarns by conventional weaving process. Then we have non woven ge geotextiles which are made from randomly oriented fiber into a loose web by bonding with partial melting, needle punching or chemical binding agents. Then you have kinetic geo, uh, knitted geotextiles. As the name suggests, they are uh, use the knitting, like uh, uh, the uh, woolen clothes are knitted. Similarly, they are knitted, looks like knitted. They are produced by interlo interlooping one or more yarns together. Then you have stitch bonded geotextiles. They are formed by the stitching together of fibers or yarns. So, one by one, we are going to see first one woven geotextile, non woven geotextiles. So, these two both are woven geotextiles that means they are weaved like a, like you know that uh, like clothes are weaved. So, you can say that it looks like a, a cloth or you may have a kind of a, you know mat uh, like a, so little thicker clothes it appears. Then what you have here this was geotextiles woven type then you have another geotextiles non woven types. So, in the A case it is non woven it is sheet you cannot you, you do not see the grid pattern or like this one. While this B part is knitted and this knitting is done like uh, like you know this knitting of the woolen cloths uh, sweaters and all the things. So, similarly you have this uh, so you have woven non woven and knitted. Then another form of geotextiles is called geogrids where geogrid is a polymeric mesh like planar product. So, again it is made of uh, polymers only because it is uh, as we said geosynthetics are nothing but synthetic material they are not man made materials are formed by intersecting elements called ribs joined at the junctions. So, the ribs can be linked by extrusion bonding or interlacing. Extruded geogrids are classified in the following two categories based on direction of stretching. So, geogrids first of all they look mesh like planar products. So, this this is like this typical geogrids. So, you have mesh here bioxial mesh and that thing. So, extruded are classified in two following two categories based on the direction of stretching one is called uniaxial geogrids another is called bioxial geogrids. In case of uniaxial geogrids, they are made by the longitudinal stretching of regularly punched polymer sheets and therefore possess a much higher tensile strength in the longitudinal direction than in the transverse direction. So, one side you have the longitudinal direction and on another side you have the transverse direction. So, uniaxial geogrids have more strength in the longitudinal direction. So, here let us say this is uniaxial. So, longitudinal direction is this in this direction strength is higher compared to what you have in transverse directions. So, so, this is L direction while this will be transverse direction perpendicular to this one. So, in case of uniaxial geogrids the strength in the longitudinal directions is more compared to greater compared to you have in the case of transverse direction. While in case of bi biaxial grids they are uh, made both the longitudinal and transfer direction stretching of so that means their strength is equal in both the directions uh, they are uh, possess equal tensile strength in both the longitudinal and transverse direction which has been shown here and which looks a kind of a uniform also. So, whether you go in this direction or in the perpendicular direction their strength is same. So, uniaxial is basically uh, keeping in view that one direction is stronger than the another direction while in biaxial case both are uh, almost equal strength. So, this was about uniaxial and biaxial then there are two other types of uh, geogrids also which is bonded and woven. So, bonded geogrids uh, like uh, it is a grid pattern. So, 
they are bonded together that means you have like on the top of it this is this is placed on the top one one sheet is down and another is and then it is kind of bonded then another is woven where like it is wooed means it is uh, made so here in this case both the geogrids are uh, in the second figure b d part it is both are woven so we have discussed two types of geotex uh, geosynthetics one is geotextile which is like a cloth and then another we see, uh, uh, discuss grids and when we say geogrid why it is grid because you see the grid pattern is there so here uniaxial biaxial grid that means you have a grid has been made here again this is so geogrids has been discussed geotextile and geogrid now the key features of geogrids is that the opening between the longitudinal transverse ribs calls aperture so when we call this opening are large enough to create interlocking with the surrounding soil particles so this opening which you have here kind of aperture this aperture here or maybe like this long this this aperture this should be first of all large enough to create interlocking with the surrounding soil particles so if you have this uh, aperture very small then they are not going to be effective if you are going to be very large that then also you know, not going to be effective the shapes of the apertures are either elongated ellipses near squares with rounded corners squares or rectangles so the shape is not only one shape you may have elliptical shape square shape rounded corners or squares or rectangles so many types of shapes are are like possible however the dimension of the aperture may vary from about 2.5 to 15 cm so minimum is kind of 2.5 cm which is kind of an 1 inch or like it could go 15 cm half of the feet not more than that the ribs of geogrids are often quite stiff compared to the fibers of geotextiles so in geotextiles which is kind of a cloth while in in case of geo grid you have a grid pattern you have the ribs and these ribs are quite stronger compared to geotextiles also the junction strength is important in the case of geogrids because through these junctions loads are transmitted from one type of rib to the another when placed into the soil so at junctions uh, like for example i can show in the figure this like this is the junction here so these are the junctions which is uh, basically uh, you have longitudinal rib and the transverse rib joint of that so these are the junctions here the junction will be here in the second case you can see the junctions here and the junctions should be quite strong if the junctions is weak then there are problems so junction strength is important in the case of geogrid because through these junctions load are transmitted from one type of rib to the other when placed into the soil so uh, special attention is required that when you have geogrids then the strength at the junction should be sufficient so we have discussed with this, with this geotextile and geogrid now we are going to talk about geonets geonets so it looks like a net geonets are extruded polymer masses and look like a geogrids they are different from geogrids not in the material or configuration but in their functions so the function of geonets is different than the geogrids even they may look like a geogrid only geonets have generally diamond shaped aperture that are typically 12 mm long and 8 mm wide so this aperture should be around uh, 12 mm 12 mm uh, like you can say 1.2 cm so that was the half if you recall that was there it was 25 mm and 8 mm wide so here the shape of or aperture size in case of geonet is quite smaller compared to what you have in the geo grids for example here is the example of geonets so aperture is here also and aperture you also see in geogrid but the size of this aperture in this case is quite smaller compared to in geogrids so this is the kind of example it is honeycomb structure uh, so it, it looks like uh, you know that uh, different but in this uh, excreted and the size uh, to show it looks in picture 
otherwise the size of these apertures are not so big. So, this was our geonets. Then one of the like uh, application uh, one of the types of geosynthetics called geomembrane. As the name suggests that there is a membrane and these geomembranes are mostly used for to avoid the erosion that soil is not cut down. And geomembrane is a continuous membrane type barrier liner composed of materials of low permeability to control fluid migrations. So, here the permeability is low and when you have the permeability low then chances that water drained out is less and it will help to control for example, uh, for clay you have will have low permeability, but for sand you will have high permeability. In case of clay soils which can retain water for some time like uh, permeability is low that is why they are used impermeable layers inside the embankment dams as a core and they help to control fluid migration. The material may be which is used for geomembrane could be asphaltic or polymeric or a combination of these two. So, typical geomembrane is shown in this figure like it looks like a kind of a book and then you know that uh, this, this is like uh, part of the box and other things and but it is the filter uh, like you because this is geomembrane. So, the membranes are there with, through which or uh, like you know it may allow to go water out but it may not allow to soil particles to go out. So, it may help in controlling the uh, controlling the movement of or erosion of the soil. So, this we have discussed four types of geosynthetics first of all geotextile then geonet uh, geogrid third is geonet and fourth is geomembrane. However, many times for many problems these the different types of geosynthetics are not used separately rather they are used combination with each other and in that case if you are using more than one types of geosynthetics together then they will call geocomposites. So, we are going to talk about the term geocomposites is applied to product that they are manufactured in laminated or compo composite fo fo form from two or more geosynthetic materials. For example, two or more it could be from geotextiles, geogrid, geonets and geomembranes and that in combination perform specific functions more effectively than when used separately. So, thus why this geotex two types of geotex are combined because one is not enough first of all for doing that task and separately is not enough. So, if they join hand together uh, and that that forms geocomposites then perhaps that could be a solution of the problem. As such there can be combinations and what are combinations? Geotextile, geonet, geotextile, geogrid, geotextile, geomembrane. So, all three are combined with geotextiles. Then similarly with geonet, geomembrane, you have geomembrane, clay and geomembrane, geonet, geomembrane which are used in different civil engineering applications. So, you have four types of uh, like you know we discussed four types of geosynthetics. One is geotextile, then geogrid geonet and geomembrane. So, many times their combination can be used. For example, this is one of the example where geocomposites have been used. A, A is uh, saying that geocomposite is used as a drainage separator in part A, while in part B it is used surface erosion control mat. So, this was like uh, for controlling uh, the erosion of the soil. So, this was about uh, uh, com geocomposites. Uh, thus, in today's this lecture, many of the figures are taken from this first reference, which is a book by Professor Asker Shukla, which is on geosynthetics and their applications. And uh, this uh, contribution from Professor Shukla to geosynthetics is uh, uh, acknowledged and which has been used only for uh, teaching the masses. Then, some of the figures are also a couple of figures from the second references. So, with this, I say thank you to you and thank you for your kind attention.